Hey everybody, it's David Carr, and uh, I've got another photo to edit for you. And uh, this is one that I actually shot five years ago, a little over five years ago, as a matter of fact, uh, in St. Augustine, Florida. And uh, this is before I even really had launched a photography career. Um, I was more of just a hobbyist, but uh, this is one of those shots that was sort of a happy accident. I didn't really plan it to turn out the way it did. It just actually turned out to be awesome. And um, so I do not take a lot of credit for that other than the fact that I just took the opportunity to to try a, a photograph and uh, but we'll we'll dive in and see uh, you'll kind of see what I'm what I'm talking about here so let's go okay so check this photo out this was taken in midday just right here on the beach in uh, you know the, that's the Atlantic Ocean on the coast of Florida and um, the the thing about this shot was I, I wasn't I wasn't even there to photograph this pier. I was actually doing some senior portraits on the beach um, for a friend, and uh, I saw this pier, and I was like, well, that's a pretty cool structure, you know. And as a photographer, we always like old gritty things that kind of tell a story and have history. And this is full of grit. It's full of rust and barnacles and you know just a lot of character and uh but you know as i was walking by it i just thought to myself eh, i'm sure this thing gets photographed all the time what what is my image going to do that's going to be any different or better than anything else out there and granted we don't always need to stop ourselves from taking the photograph when when we feel that way but this was just a situation where i was being cynical and uh almost didn't even take the shot because again it was midday which is not the time of day you think of taking a photograph of something like a pier um, but I happen to have with me my tripod and I happen to have an ND filter a neutral density filter and that was the key to getting this shot and uh, I mean this is straight out of camera and uh, you know you can just see what the water is doing here. It just, it's such a cool effect. And that's what you get with that ND filter. And, you know, typically we use those for waterfalls and, and things like that. Um, but this was a situation where I was like, well, I just want to see what happens if I blur this water out. And, you know, there were people walking underneath the pier. There were people out here surfing. There were people swimming. It, there was a lot of activity and you would never know it because this 13 second exposure you can see up here 13 seconds uh, at f8 iso 64 which is a nice clean very low iso uh, but this this 13 second exposure allowed me to get this shot midday even with a bunch of people around and you don't see any of them and uh so i just uh i was i was really excited when i looked at the back of the camera but so first and foremost as far as editing goes, um, and of course I've already edited this photo before, and, and it's been printed and it's been entered into competitions, and it's uh, it's been purchased even. So it's, uh, it's, it's one of my favorite images, and lo and behold, it was taken over five years ago. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna straighten it out because the horizon is definitely crooked. There are different ways to do this, but I just like to open my crop tool and uh, and to do that the shortcut is the R key and so do that and you can kind of see that straightened it out nicely much better and uh, now I want to crop it because it's not quite centered and this is not a rule of thirds type shot um, this is one where I want perfect symmetry right down the middle so I'll bring my crop tool back up hitting the R key and I'm actually gonna bring I'm gonna kind of bring up this corner a little bit and then I'll bring this corner down because I don't really need so much information at the top. Definitely want some of it, but uh, we're gonna kind of just put these two kind of white lines, so to speak. We'll kind of put those pretty much in the center third uh, of the photo. And um, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, I'm gonna click the R key again to get out of the crop tool. I do that every now and then, just kind of go back and forth. That's pretty close. I might just slide over just a little bit. Um, a little, little bit more. Let's go this way. Okay, yeah, I like that. And I actually like the amount of information I have at the top. I like where the bottom is. You know, this is personal preference. And, you know, a lot of times uh, the horizon should be in the either the upper third or the lower third. But this is such a perfectly symmetrical shot that I just think it's great to have it right down the middle, you know, right across the middle, I should say, and have this right down the middle. Um, it just, there, are, there is a time and place, and many times and places for symmetry in photography, just not always. Um, okay, that looks pretty good to me. Now we're gonna work on some exposure, some, uh, you know, just kind of get my 
exposure where I want. I'm going to bring the actual exposure slider up. And then I'm going to bring the shadow slider because I really want to see all the detail in that uh, in that concrete and in these metal pylons. I mean, I just think that that's just there's so much cool stuff going on there. Um, bring the shadows back a little bit. And now, obviously, I think, well, it's obvious to me, the color is not right. It's a little warm. I don't even know what my white balance was. I was shooting this with a D810, which is a fantastic camera. But sometimes I struggled with the white balance in that camera. So I'm going to pull the temperature a little cooler here. And I just like it so much better when, when you make this a cooler shot. Um, go too far, go back, too far, go back, kind of just, you know, it's almost like a pendulum. You go, you swing one way, you swing the other way, and then you kind of just keep going back and forth until it feels, well, it, you know, it has to feel right to you. And um, I don't know if the tint is doing anything for me that I, if I need to change anything with, you know, I can go just a little bit more in the, in the magenta department. I don't want to go too far. I don't want to go too green. Again, it's up to you. There might be a certain thing you're wanting to show with your with your image. You might even want to go black and white. I'll hit the the V as in Victor key, and just you know that's a quick way to kind of get an idea of what a black and white would look like, um, which that looks fantastic as well. Um, but I am a sucker for color, and with all this cool rust and the blue sky and the blue water and kind of these yellowish orange tones, I just think it it I think it wants to be a color photo. At least it does for me. <laughs> I'm gonna pull my blacks back a little bit. I'm trying to add some contrast without using the contrast slider. And when I do that, I usually end up bringing the exposure back up a little bit more. Looking at my histogram, I've got plenty of highlights, obviously, in the sky here. But when I do that, my sky is pretty blown out. And uh, again, this was midday. Um, so it's going to be blown out, even even if it was overcast. And it wasn't really as overcast as it might look here. Uh, the the 13-second exposure definitely made the, the sky a little bit more hazy, just because this, the clouds were moving as well. Um, I'm going to bring my highlights down, and I get, that pulls some of the detail back out of my sky and out of my water, um, which, is, which is not bad. In fact, I brought the highlights way down, I guess. Um, I'll just play with the whites a little bit. You know, a lot of these, there's no exact science to these sliders. You just you just play with them until the, the image starts to look the way you want it to. I definitely want to add some texture because even though there is actual texture in the photo, I want to really accentuate that. So I'm going to bring it up. Not too much. I don't want to get too crazy with it and, and make it look like a postcard. I want it to just be just the right amount. I don't know if I'm going to need much clarity. Eh, maybe just a hint of clarity is nice. Problem is when you add a lot of clarity, you you end up losing some of the saturation. Um, so obviously, I'm not going to go all the way to the to the side with that. We we want to just sprinkle these these presence elements into the photo. Okay, so now I actually want to play with my vibrance and uh, and and bring that up a little bit because I, I again I like color. I, I'm a sucker for for good color, and I'm I'm bringing it way up. Uh, I want to see what it looks like if I push it to an extreme. Saturation, uh, it can be really, it can it can really ruin a photo very quickly. I like to play with it. I like to just see if it's gonna do much. You know, adding just a little bit of saturation. Uh, some people really don't like saturation. I, I like it when it's right. It's just a matter of getting it right. And uh, again, that is up to you. You have to decide what what is the right amount of any of these elements for you. You can just see I'm playing with things again. No exact science to it. Just trying to see where my image starts to really speak. And I'm going to hit my backslash key and just kind of see where we've come from. Okay. Yeah. When you hit the backslash key and kind of see the before, it doesn't show you the before you cropped. Um, it, it, it shows after you cropped. So, but you still get, as far as the tonality and the exposure and all that, you still get to see a nice before and after. What's interesting is now it looks more purple to me. Um, now that I stared at it this way for a second, I bring it back. It's, it's a little too much magenta. Your eyes will start to adjust to what they're seeing, and and what they're seeing will kind of become the new normal. And you can sometimes lose sight of what what is correct. So it's good every now and then to just walk away from your computer, or you know, start just look at something else for a while. Go look outside, just see actual real world colors, and see uh, what they look like. Because your your eyes start fooling you when you're staring at an edit for too long. So. Uh, Yeah, I like that. That looks really good to me. Um, I might just add a hint 
of a vignette. I, I, vignetting is also one of those that like, can be very much a faux pas. If you, if you go doing this kind of stuff, it's, I mean, to each his own, but I don't really love super vignetting. Uh, there, there've been situations where I have done it and it's been, it, I think it has served a photo well, but I just, I just like to see what a little bit of a vignette will do. Um, let's see, just, just ever so slightly. I'm going to like minus 11, which is actually more than, than I would do on, on some photos. But for some reason, I guess because the sky and the, the, the water is so bright, it, it definitely minus 10 minus 11 doesn't really give you, it doesn't affect it so much that it looks gimmicky. I'm seeing right here, a nice dust spot. Um, I'm going to hit the Q key. That's going to bring up my clone and healing brushes. I'm in my healing brush. I'll just start with that. Let me shrink it down a little bit. One thing you can do if you're using a mouse, I like to edit with a mouse because I just like the, this more specific control that I get. You can drag, well, at least on most mouses, on my magic mouse, my Apple magic mouse, I can drag my finger top to bottom on the mouse and it, it increases and decreases the size of my brush. So that's kind of a nice, nice quick way to do it. I'm going to go like that. And, uh, and then I'm going to hit Q, get out of it. That fixed that beautifully for me. Um, let's go back to fit up here just to fit that image. I'm going to hit the L key two times. And that kind of puts me in my lights out mode. Uh, and I can see the image as if it were being presented on a wall. Um, I actually like that a lot. Now there's a big glaring, obvious thing that's really bugging me. And it's this graffiti up here where somebody went and scratched in some sort of, I don't know what this is, but it, it, it's just not very appealing to me and, um, almost looks like some sort of a satanic logo. <laughs> so I think I'm going to go ahead and just remove that. And it's not exactly the easiest thing to remove because there's a lot of detail, but, we, but it is removable and we're going to work on that. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to go back to my fit view here and I want to sharpen the photo because as you can see, it's a little bit blurry. It's not as sharp as I would like it to be. I may end up sharpening it in Photoshop, but uh, I want to just see what adding some sharpness in Lightroom will do. Lightroom defaults, at least my version of Lightroom defaults at 40, um, you know, when you import. So it's not really adding any extra sharpness. Um, on its own. So I'm just bringing in some sharpness here. It's a very subtle difference, but it is a difference, you know, I mean, I'm way up there like 111 here, but, um, you know, back up and look at it and it looks pretty good to me. Um, okay. So I want to get rid of this. I desperately want to get rid of this. I'm going to go into Photoshop. So I'm going to hit command or control E. Okay. And that brings it into Photoshop for us. And now we can do as I always say, the heavy lifting, because Photoshop allows you to, to do so much to your photo that uh, Lightroom kind of, it, it leaves off at a certain point and you got to go into Photoshop if you really want to do a great job of something like removing this or, you know, a lot of the, the, the more specific edits, it's, it's a much stronger tool for that. I'm going to zoom in here and, um, looks pretty good to me, but I'm going to just, what I'm going to try, this is going to be the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to click command J or control J that creates another copy of my background layer. That way I can always go back and, and get back to my main background layer. If I start screwing up and doing something I don't like, and I'm way down a rabbit trail of, of edits, I can always go back to that background layer. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit the L key, which brings up my lasso and you want to make sure you're in your actual lasso tool. Um, I, I, at least that's how I like to do it. Um, I'm just going to draw kind of a crude shape around the area that I don't like. And I'm just going to see what happens if I right click, go down to fill content aware, opacity, 100%. Okay. Now look at that. That's actually pretty cool. I'm going to, I'm going to click command or control D and it gets rid of those marching ants. And I mean, my goodness, that's, uh, you know, to the average viewer, they would never know that we did that. Um, this is an interesting bit right here. It's, it looks almost like it took concrete from up here somewhere, which I, yes, it did. It actually, you can see, you can actually see where it took it. There's this little mark right here, which appears up here as well. And you can kind of, you can just kind of see where it grabbed this information, which is fine. It's not a big deal, but what I'd like to do is maybe fill this in with, with something from, you know, another area, maybe from so, somewhere over here, something that looks similar. 
So a way that I can do that, I can go up to my patch tool here, which uh, you can click uh, the J key, but bringing, clicking the J key, it's only gonna open whichever one of these tools you've used last or whichever one of these tools that you've told it to open. So opening the patch tool, I'm going to do the same kind of thing I did with the content aware fill, but I'm just gonna draw around this concrete area. And again, it's kind of a crude, shape it doesn't have to be anything specific now what i can do is drag over here and when i when you see the preview i have not let go of the button on the mouse yet when you see the preview it doesn't look good but when i let go it kind of blends it in it kind of darkens it up a little bit it blends it in hit command d that gets rid of your uh marching ants now that's pretty cool except that we have a repeating pattern here and here there are different ways i could deal with that i could actually go back to my uh, patch tool and just draw another little shape here and uh, Command D, that's actually working. So I'm just gonna go with that. Um, you just wanna work it until things look legit. You don't want it to look like you've copied anything. And to me, that's not bad. I mean, that you don't really see a carbon copy over here of anything that you see over here. Um, and just use your artist hat. Put your artist hat on when you're when you're doing these types of edits. Um, and, and you know, don't think too scientifically about it. Just look at it visually and, and ask yourself, do I like it? To me, that's fine. It looks, it works. You, you you might go in and do some other things, but that's that's about all I need to do. I'm gonna go to my spot healing brush now, though, um, which is also under the J key command. But um, I had to go select it up here. I'm gonna increase my brush size by hitting my right bracket key. I'm actually going to zoom in though, and I'm just going to clean up a few little spots like uh, this one here. Let me shrink the brush size back down a little bit, uh, maybe like that. And I'll just clean up and it's going to be random. These are random. I'm not going to clean every single white spot up because there's no point, but I'm going to just randomly go along. And if I see little spots that stand out to me, Sometimes it's good to just get rid of them because they can they can look, you know, in a printed version of your photo, they could look like uh, some sort of error in the print or, you know, they sometimes it just it's hard to tell what's really in the photo and what is some sort of error. And we don't want to see any errors. We don't want to see our prints be marred up by anything in the in the process of printing or framing them. And so um, you just want to not leave the viewer doubting. You, you want you want to make sure that they they don't even pick up on things. You see this little black spot sticking off here. That might have been a bird. That might have been part of the uh, the rust. But I think it might. Have, I think it was a bird. Well, it wouldn't have been a bird because I was shooting at 13 seconds. Never mind. But whatever it was, I just want to get rid of it. Um, and as I zoom in like this, I can really see that it's not as sharp as I wanted it to be, um, especially for a very high resolution camera like the D810. Um, so I'm going to attempt to sharpen it a little bit more because when it, when it comes time to print, it's really nice to have a super sharp image. Let me back up every now and then back up. If you get into that nitpicky, super closed in mode, it, it, you can sometimes lose perspective of the whole photo. So let me go up here. I actually think I want to get rid of this little spot here. It's just a little too much for me and I'll get rid of that one and that one you have to decide what you want to do with, 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 you know, when it comes to the spots and the blemishes, so to speak in your photo. Okay. Not bad at all. I'm going to try sharpening this in Photoshop because sometimes the Photoshop sharpening tools are just more powerful. So we'll go up to filter sharpen and use the unsharp mask. And it gives you a little preview over here. Um, so actually if I just click on, let me click on like the, this, maybe this edge here and you can kind of see where you are with that. I'll click on this edge. I'm already at 102%. My radius is at 3.5. That's a lot. Let me pull it all the way back and just see what the before and after you can see it really sharpening up. But if you go too far, it starts looking dumb. It just does. It, it just looks too affected. So you just, you've got to, you've got to find the balance. I'm going to go down to these barnacles and preview that because that's, there's a lot of detail on those. And look, this is zero. And I don't know if you can see that much on your screen, but it's, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty remarkable. The difference it's making in, in, in the appearance of sharpness. I don't know that it's actually sharpening, but it's, it's making it appear to be sharper, which maybe there's no difference. Maybe that's splitting hairs, but, um, okay. 
I'm just gonna, you know, there, again, there's no science to this. You might have another method, but I just, I just look at the photo and say, well, that does look better to me, and does it doesn't look too pixelated, at least, uh, at least not that I can tell. Let me go, let me zoom in a little bit and see some of my edges. There's a point where you over sharpen and your edges start to look real gritty, and then things within the photo just look gritty, and it just, it's not great. So. Um, you know, I'm not seeing a whole lot more that I want to change at this point. The only thing, and I have done this in previous edits, but I won't go there right now, is the gap between this pylon and this, let me let me increase my brush size, but the gap between this pylon and this pylon is wider than the gap between this one and this one. That may not bother you. I'm so keen about perfection that I see things like that. and. Um, I also do a lot of uh, interior architectural design and stuff like that, so I see things like this all the time. You may not see it, and it may not bother you. I could fix that. I could either stretch this out and, and give myself more space here, or I could shrink this in and, and lose some space here. I'm not gonna do that today. Um, I just wanted to kinda get a good general edit of the, of the photo. So I'm gonna hit Command or Control S, and that's gonna bring us back into Lightroom. You can see it's saving down here. It takes a, it takes a little time sometimes with with Photoshop to save your work, and um, but once it's saved, it will open up in Lightroom. Okay, and here it is back in Lightroom in all its glory. I think it looks really great. It's sharp. We cleaned it up quite a bit, and uh, it's just it to me it just it looks fantastic. I, I I still love this image and again I don't say that as some sort of reason to boast. I just it was a happy accident. I did not expect this image to turn out this way at all. I'm going to hit the L key two times, get myself in the lights out mode and really look at it and I I think that looks I think that looks wonderful. I'm very very happy with this image and um I'll sign off on it. So thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in for another episode. This was another kind of quick edit. I like giving you the quicker ones because I know that the 45 minute edits, that's a lot to sit there and endure in a YouTube video. But um, you know, there are times that I've spent hours working on a photo and I'm not gonna post a several hour video on YouTube um, showing you how I edit, but, uh, but you can kind of get an idea of some of the processes, some of the thought processes and what I'm looking for in the photo and what I'm looking to change. Um, and so hopefully that helps you out uh, in your editing as well. And I really appreciate you guys tuning in and I'll be back with more videos, guaranteed. Mm -hmm.